Hi everyone, this is Lior from TradingEnergy.com and this is your yearly outlook for gold and silver price for 2012 and a recap for 2011. So let's get started. So what happened throughout 2011? This chart shows the development of gold and silver prices in normalized that were normalized to the beginning of the year. And as you can see, the, throughout the beginning of the year, the gold and silver prices started off with a moderate decline. But as the months progressed, mainly in March and, and April, gold and silver prices, gold had a steady incline, but, even, but silver price, even more than gold, had a very speculative move as it soared and reached at one point 50, nearly 55% above its initial price level. This, this came into play around, around April. What happened next was that CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, where silver and prices are traded, intervened in the market and raised the margin of silver. And the reaction in the market soon came with a very sharp and a very sharp correction that in, took a matter of f several days only as uh, silver prices plummeted. But after that, gold and silver prices had a, had a steady increase, which started to rise again very sharply throughout, throughout uh, July and August. What happened then? Let's check out. What were the main factors that affected not only throughout uh, July and August, but in other months of the year, the rally of gold and silver prices? There were three, main, three key factors to consider. One was the FOMC's decision to issue quantitative easing plan at the end of 2010. This expanded the monetary base and helped push up gold and silver prices. There was the speculation around the instability of the U.S. economy. As you recall, around July and August, there were a lot of debates in, in raising the debt ceiling or not by the U.S. economy. Eventually, the debacle was resolved. But it also had an effect as the Standard & Poor's and afterwards other rating agencies downgraded the U.S.'s credit rating from AAA to AA+. Many sees it as something that doesn't have, doesn't have a real effect, but it had an, a, a certain effect on the U.S. on the gold and silver prices market as a gold and silver prices soared following the, these uh, these events and finally there were a lot of speculation around in around the around the fed issuing another stimulus plan qe3 eventually didn't come into play and there was only a plan to purchase long-term securities as i'll see i'll show you later on but this was also one of the factors that helped help to keep gold and silver prices up and of course there was the pledge of the fed to to keep interest rate low, but I'll get to that when I'll review the outlook for 2012. So, okay, that was the rally. Again, following this and, uh, this uh, increase, there were two factors that came into play over here around the end of September that helped pu pull down gold and silver prices. As you can see, it plummeted in a matter of days. Two things, one, again, CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, intervene in the market and raise this time not only on gold but uh, not only on silver but also on gold uh, securities so it pushed traders out crowded out and also there was the matter of uh, the fed not issuing a quantitative easing plan but actual but actually a plan to purchase long-term security in exchange for short-term securities this was uh, the operation twist that everybody talked about and this isn't the monetary expansion it didn't had an effect on the expanding the the balance sheet of the fed so many were uh, disappointed from this uh, reaction it, so it so it also had an effect on gold and silver prices that plummeted soon after there were again some talks about not issuing another stimulus plan maybe at the end of the year and finally on december 23rd when the fomc intervened for the last time in 2011 there were no quantitative easing plan nothing came into place so again uh, gold and silver prices were were may have been affected from this from this non-decision and uh, sharply declined throughout the rest uh, of 2000 of uh, december eventually silver prices uh, ended even below its uh, initial price level from uh, the beginning of the year and gold price rose by nearly 10 percent 
This chart shows the ratio of gold to silver. And as you can see, throughout the first quarter of the year, until uh, roughly until October, so it's even a little bit more than a quarter, uh, silver has sharply outperformed gold. But after CME intervened and raised the margins, there was a reverse also in the trend and the ratio started to rise, i.e. gold price has outperformed silver throughout the, re the remainder of the year. This chart shows the relationships, the linear correlations between gold and silver, silver and major commodities, major uh, currencies. And as you can see, the Australian dollar had the strongest correlation with silver and with gold, and followed by the Canadian dollar, the Canadian, the U.S. to Canadian dollar, and finally the Indian, the Indian rupee, which is not a surprise because India is a major player in uh, in importing and uh, consuming uh, gold. So obviously, also silver is related to it, and the euro also. So as these currencies. Uh, uh, change direction from the US dollar and mostly were uh, depreciated, they also had an effect on gold and silver prices to further decline. So what we should we expect in 2012? There are obviously different uh, forces that pull, that will push and pull gold and silver prices to different directions. In regards to what could have uh, an effect to to raise gold and silver prices, there there's the possibility, even though it's shutting down as we're speaking, but there's still a possibility of another quantitative easing plan. Now that the U.S. is entering an election year, there's always the possibility that if the U.S. the U.S. will go into another slowdown, which is another key factor, then there might be another. The Fed will maybe step up and and issue another quantitative easing plan. In, in such an event, it could have a, a positive effect on gold and silver prices. The low interest rates that will continue to be low at least until, as, of a, as the Fed pledged to keep interest rate low until the mid-2013, of 2011, 2013. so it will also help keep gold and silver prices at their current high level. On the other hand, there are several reasons that could have a negative effect on gold and silver prices and trade gold and silver down, including the recovery of the U.S. economy. There are many economists that expect that the U.S. economy will uh, grow at least as good as 2011, and if not, maybe even better than 2011, but slightly better. The European debt crisis, as I previously showed in uh, one of my blogs, there is the, the European debt crisis in the last several months tended to be negatively correlated to have a negative effect on gold and silver prices and as the concerns around the European debt crisis increase there is some more liquidity problems and people trade trade away gold and silver so th this may have also a negative effect on gold and silver prices CME margins as I as I presented to you in 2011 this, this will be a key factor if gold and silver will start to react again and show very sharp changes there is a good chance the CME will intervene again and in that case will trade down gold and silver and of course the US dollar if it will continue to appreciate against other major currencies it could have also a negative effect on gold and silver prices okay that's it you're welcome to check out my blog at tradingenergy.com for more on gold and silver thank you for listening and have a great year